African Americans that made a difference in organized baseball. During the time of the Great Depression, there was a lot of conflict with black people playing baseball, until Branch Rickey, which was the general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, had Jackie Robinson play for him. In 1939, Martin Luther King Jr. compromised the conflict by ending the Great Depression. This is Kurt Roberts. He was the second baseman for the Pittsburgh Pirates. His MLB career started in 1954 and ended in 1956. But before his short major league career, he played for the Kansas City Monarchs in the Negro Leagues and played in the minor leagues. He got chosen to play for the Pirates, but not just for his skills, but for his personality too. His MLB career was destined to be short considering his batting average significantly lowered in his second season. Jackie Robinson feared that the mounting racial abuse would affect Robert's game, so he contacted Roberts to help encourage him. Sadly, that didn't work, and Roberts was cut from the Pirates during his 1955 season. This is Ernie Bates. He was a shortstop and first baseman for the Chicago Cubs. His MLB career started in 1953 and ended in 1971. Banks played for the Cubs for 19 seasons. In 1970, he became a member of the 500 Home Run Club, and when his career ended, he hit a total of 512 home runs, which was the record for the most home runs as a shortstop. He also held the record for five grand slams, and that was not broken for more than 30 years. Banks retired in 1971 and became a coach for the Cubs. This is Bob Trice. He was a pitcher for the Philadelphia Athletics, known as the Oakland Athletics today. His MLB career started in 1953 on September 13th and ended in 1955. Trice was the first African American to play with the Athletics. Prior to playing in the MLB, he had struggled in the MILB, but he did great in the International League playing with the Ottawa A's. His great game performances earned him a spot with the Athletics. Although Trice's career in the MLB was short, his work against racial intolerance as one of the early African American players to be an MLB innovator can't be excessively emphasized. This is Willie Mace. He played for multiple teams in his MLB career. His MLB career started in 1951 and ended in 1973, but his baseball career started in 1947 with the Chattanooga Choo Choo's. Three years later, the New York Giants signed him to their B-class branch in Trenton, New Jersey. The year after, he was moved up to AAA Minneapolis. In that same year, he got called up to the New York Giants on May 24, 1951. But Mays was skeptical about all this all of a sudden move up. Nevertheless, his plane ticket was on its way to his manager, which was always persistent, so there was no getting out of it. This is Sam the Jet Jethro. He was a center fielder for the Boston Braves and was known for his speed. His MLB career started in 1950 and ended in 1954. In 2001, another African-American player named Don Newcomb described Jethro as the fastest human being I've ever seen. Jethro played in the Negro Leagues for multiple years before he got traded to the Braves in 1949 for a whopping $150,000. In 1950, Jethro was awarded Rookie of the Year after stealing 35 bases, 18 more than any MLB player during that same year. This is Monte Irvin. He was a left fielder for the New York Giants. His MLB career started in 1949 and ended in 1956. In 1938, Monte Irvin played for the Newark Eagles in the Negro Leagues. Later, in 1942, he played for the Azules de Veracruz, Blues of Veracruz, in the Mexican League. 
Irvin, like most black players of his time, wished he'd had the opportunity to play in the MLB 10 years earlier, but racial prejudice delayed his debut until July 8, 1949. After Irvin was signed to the Giants and played for six years, he played for the Cubs in 1956. This is Willard Homelon Brown. He was an outfielder for the St. Louis Browns. His MLB career started and ended in 1947. Although Brown's career in the MLB was short, he still made a significant contribution to the acceptance of African Americans in the MLB. Brown was known for his pure strength, and according to the Society for American Baseball Research, he was one of the most feared hitters in the Negro Leagues. This is Hank Thompson. He was a third baseman for the St. Louis Browns, known for his starring arm strength. His MLB career started in 1947 and ended in 1956. Before he started his career in the MLB, he played on the Kansas City Monarchs and the Negro Leagues. Thompson was the first African American player to play for the Browns, but just over a month later, he was released. When Thompson played for the Browns, he played alongside Willard Elmer Brown, making MLB history. In 1948, Thompson returned to the Negro Leagues and played on the Monarchs. Then in 1949, he got signed to the New York Giants, becoming the first African American to play in the National and American Leagues. This is Larry Dobby. He was a center fielder for the Cleveland Indians. His MLB career started in 1947 and ended in 1959. Dobby was the first African American to play for the Indians. He was also the first black person to go straight from the Negro Leagues to the MLB. Dobby was the first African American to play in the MLB. Dobby was truly a pioneer who went on to play for the White Sox and the Tigers. This is Jackie Robinson. His MLB career started in 1947 and ended in 1956. He was the first baseman and second baseman for the Brooklyn Dodgers, making him the first African American to break the color barrier in the modern era. This moment went down in history and allowed more players of his race to follow in his footsteps. Robinson was chosen to play for the Dodgers not only for his skill in the game of baseball, but also because the general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, Branch Rickey, believed that Robinson could handle the racial prejudice and discrimination on and off the field. After a quite long discussion that lasted three hours, Rickey asked if Robinson could handle the racial abuse without losing his cool. Robinson answered, Are you looking for a Negro who is afraid to fight back? Then Rickey answered, Robinson, I am looking for a ball player with guts enough not to fight back. Perhaps more importantly, he challenged deeply rooted segregation and made a valuable contribution to the civil rights movement. Robinson retired from baseball on January 5, 1957 and landed a spot in the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1962. In 1997, MLB retired Robinson's number 42 all across MLB teams. Robinson is the first professional athlete to receive such an honor. In conclusion, many African American baseball players broke the barrier to allow more people of the race to play Major League Baseball. Although many contributed to reducing racial discrimination, Jackie Robinson was instrumental in this movement, along with Martin Luther King Jr. This was the beginning of many differences made in society.